All right, in this video, we're gonna work on some leg length discrepancies. What we're gonna try and do is loosen some certain muscles here and stretch certain areas so we can balance that out and then working our way into the hips as well to try and ease some of that back pressure that a lot of people are feeling. Now you notice I've got a kettlebell and a drink bottle here. Balance bottle, if you have a look for them, they're a brilliant group that do an awesome foam roller water bottle. So you can use a foam roller or a kettlebell. I like the kettlebell because it's nice and solid and it gives me a better release. Now I'm looking just above my Achilles tendon here. I'm going to place my leg on the handle and I'm just gonna slowly swipe from side to side. If you want more pressure, you can place your other leg on the top, but more pressure doesn't mean you're going to get a greater release. So we're gonna sit here for a minute or two. We're gonna work on both sides. As we're going through with this, it's just nice, slow, smooth controlled movements. Because you want it to work through the fibers of the muscle and allow them to have time to relax with the pressure that's being applied to them. Going faster doesn't mean you're going to work through more muscle fibers anything it's usually quite the opposite you just tend to glide over the top and not get as a profound release of that particular muscle that you're looking at trying to address so when you're looking at your soft tissue release and your stretching think more of a less is more approach Less pressure can yield a greater result, especially when you're in a heightened state of tension or excitation in the muscle. We don't necessarily wanna be going and applying a whole lot of stimulus to it and try and expect it to yield a positive result. You can go up to five minutes on any particular area applying this sort of method, um, trying to get the release but where we've gone for about a minute, that's enough to yield what we want as we're going through. Now we're gonna come further up to the main part of our calf and do the same thing. Lay it on the handle of the bell or your foam roller and we're gonna rock gently from side to side. You can also flex your foot up and down as well as going from side to side. But the main thing is to have nice controlled movements. Not aiming for lots of pressure where it's incredibly painful. It'll be uncomfortable and there'll be some discomfort. Uh, there's no lie on that, but chasing pain is not how you create a therapeutic response in the human body is. The body cannot actually really differentiate that stimulus from being good pain, if you want to call it that, and bad pain. Essentially, pain is pain. The body will always have a flight or fight response to that stimulus. So going along and getting a brutal deep tissue massage isn't always the answer. And most of the time in what I do, I find it's rarely the answer. I find most people become more tight and more sore and in more pain from those real deep pounding sessions because the body has then bound up worse in relation to the stimulus that was presented to it. Again, not knowing that you're trying to help it. You're trying to create a release and you're trying to help it move better, but instead all it felt was pain, so everything bound up worse. So control your pressure, start off conservatively and work your way up to more and more pressure as you go through. This will be over a matter of sessions and weeks. Don't expect it within your first few goes. Now we're gonna do the same thing again. Coming onto our other leg, just above the Achilles, place the other leg over the top if you wish and just scrub gently from side to side. 
So as we go through all this, we're going to release all the muscles first, and then I'm going to take you through some neuromuscular activation stretching. It's a bit of a mouthful, but with this type of stretching, you are using your brain in relation to your muscles and you're telling them what to do. And how this works, instead of passively pulling on something, is you're actually telling the body how to rewire itself for a new length tension relationship and how to basically change its postural position. As you sort of may notice, at times you go and have self-massage, you feel really good for an hour or two, sometimes for a day or two. But then the old habits will start creeping back in and the body remembers the way that it was positioned prior and it starts sinking back into that position. Well, with neuromuscular activation or PNF stretching, uh, you start reprogramming that body um, to change into a new holding position. So the more that we do it within a certain reason that is, the more your body's gonna stay in that new postural position. And once it starts becoming accustomed to that, that starts becoming the way that you are actually meant to be rather than going into those hunchbacks and swaybacks and rounded shoulders and all those sorts of positions. So now we're gonna move further up onto the main part of your calf again and just gently from side to side. Again, not looking for exquisite pain. It's not helpful in the initial parts once you've had a few weeks and a few regular sessions either with someone or at home following this video you will find then that you can search for more painful responses so to speak um, to create that release and that lengthening process because basically with all this Without loosening a muscle, it's never gonna really change its length tension relationship. You can stretch and stretch and stretch as much as you like, but for the amount of effort you have to put in for the result that you get, it's almost negligible. So you will spend so much time doing this and dominate your life doing this and wonder why you're never really feeling any better for a long lasting result. So find there's so much effort to basically yield little result. Whereas we can go with this method of loosening your muscles first and then adding in some neuromuscular activation and yield a much higher result with far less work and effort. Now that said, just loosening and stretching is not going to fix your problems either. You have to strengthen the body um, in a particular way that adheres to the way the body functions. Just going out and getting jacked and muscular isn't gonna help either. You've got to understand how the body functions together as a cohesive unit and work towards creating strength through those systems in that particular way. I'm not saying conventional lifting is bad, it all has its place, but you need to be able to work it all together as a cohesive unit. It doesn't just magically happen because you've done a bunch of releasing and stretching, so we've got to keep it strong as well so it can hold those positions. Now, I'm going to move the bell off to the side. From here, we're going to work on the side of the hip. So, again, using your bell or your roller, lay onto your side. So, if I'm on my right side here, I bring my right ankle up to my left knee and just smooth, controlled rolling just off to the side of the hip. Only looking for about one to two inches as we roll. Same thing as before, smooth, controlled rolling. And watch the position of your shoulder too. You don't want to be taking big, long, rolling strokes and placing your shoulder under a lot of strain. A lot of people injured themselves and hurt themselves 
doing their own foam rolling and stretching at the end because they're not worried about their posture as they go through. It's all as important, no matter what you're working on, you must make sure that you're keeping your body in as good position as you possibly can while you go through and you do these because it's just as important as deadlifting heavy or swinging a dumbbell or kettlebell around. Then I'm going to release the leg, I'm going to roll over to the other side, bring the ankle up to the knee again, adjust our arm position, and just rolling off to the side of the hip. Next we'll come along to the front of our hip, working from the mid part of the quad up to just above the hips, working all the way through, breaking them down into sections. Again, we're just going to have nice, smooth, easy rolling, controlling our pressure. Discomfort's to be expected, but pain is not productive. So if it's super painful, Find something that is less dense and has a little bit more give to it that will allow you to be on here a bit more comfortably. You don't want to be tight and bound up protecting yourself while you're trying to do this because it's so painful. Biggest thing through all of this, remember to breathe. Don't hold your breath. Make sure that you're breathing and allowing your body to get oxygen and allowing it to relax as you go through. Okay, we're gonna come along and use the roller now over the front. So we can start off on the mid part of the quad. Our spare knee is gonna be our balance. The further out from our object we're using the more pressure we'll apply, the closer in, the less pressure we'll apply. And we'll rest on our forearms, keeping our elbow directly underneath our shoulders. I'm just gonna lay on the top of that. I'm just gonna simply bend and straighten our leg to where we're comfortable to. As we're going through of our time frame here, remembering to go for about a minute or so up to the five minute mark. So working our way up. Just gonna gently bend and extend that leg. Aiming to get further up as we go through each time. Now, let's bring it up to just on the front of the hip here. Up into hip flexors or psoas, however you'd like to call it or as you know it by. Just keeping the toes on the ground. So rather than flattening out our foot, we're going to stay on our toes. Just a gentle rock forward and back. Spanning only a couple of inches over that hip flexor area.
no, no release. Come over the other side, again mid part of the quad, resting on our forearms and just gentle bending and extending our leg on the mid part of our quad. Now coming along to that hip flexor area and just rolling gently like the other leg, keeping the toes flexed and touching the ground. Okay, we're gonna come up, we'll swap back to the kettlebell for this last release. We're gonna have the handles pointing towards our feet. We're gonna place it just below the belly button around where your bladder area is. And you're gonna come out into a box squat or box stretch position, I should say, with your knees resting on the forearms and just controlling the pressure into the kettlebell. Now warning, this can be very uncomfortable for a lot of people. So start off gently, breathe and relax your body into it and allow yourself to sink deeper into the release as you go through.
not coming off. So that's the releases that we're going to do to fix the area. The next uh, series of videos we're going to work on the stretches that are going to join to this. So we'll take a little break, come back and we'll work on the stretches next.